I'm Mui Bean. So we're going to say, let's save it and close it and check it out. So then we'll go to the tab to the right and check it out, run it. So now we have the adjusting entry for accounts receivable that is in here. There's our adjusting entry in the A to the R, increase in the AR, which makes it right as of the cutoff, 228. And then we reversed it. If I go into March, we reversed it in March with the journal entry and that journal entry nullifies itself out in March against the actual invoice, which means it's only just recorded in February. So now you might get into the same question of why did you, why did you enter it as of 3-1 instead of 3-5? If the invoice was entered in 3-5, why don't you just enter it in 3-5 and then you won't have five days of it being kind of not exactly right because it's showing like this negative amount for five days. Why don't you just enter it as of 3-5? Why? Because I want all the reversing entries to be easily found and I'm sacrificing the fact that the financial states statements will not be as perfect in the middle of the month in order to make it as easy as possible for us to be correct as of the periodic statements and to allow the accounting department to do whatever format is easiest for them to do. So I'm going to go back to the tab to the left and let's go to the profit and loss, the P and the L. Notice that we have it nullified. So we once again, adjusting entry, pulled it into the income over here and we're back down to zero on the income statement. And so if I go into the March, we've got the two items, the reversing entry and then the actual invoice nullifying each other out. It's not gonna look correct because you got a negative uh, revenue for five days. But then after that fifth day, when the invoice is in place, it nullifies itself. And I'm okay to have a negative amount showing up for five days because again, we're sacrificing a little bit of inconsistency to have all our reversing entries happen as of one day so we can know where they are. Going back to the tab, same thing happens with the uh, cost of goods sold here. Same thing happens back on over with the sales tax. If I go down to the sales tax, we entered the journal entry for the sales tax to make it right in here. There's the adjusting entry. And then we've got the reversing entry and the, the actual invoice nullifying themselves in the following period. It's not going back down to zero because this is a permanent account as opposed to the income statement accounts. And then if I go up to inventory, we've got the inventory is, is back, you know, in alignment. So same thing happens here. We did an adjustment inventory impact with the journal entry. And then in March, we entered this one and we're back uh, good to go. So that is good. So like if I look at my inventory report, then let's say I made my inventory report over here as of uh, 022823 and run it. So now I'm at 47. Let's pull out the trusty calculator. Trusty calculator. I'm at 4746, which doesn't tie out as of the cutoff date to what's on here. It's at here it's at four three four six difference by 400 why because i did an adjusting journal entry and remember anytime i do something to inventory i should do it with an invoice or a sales receipt or if i'm buying inventory with an expense check bill form if i'm just entering a journal entry i'm not adding the item and therefore i can throw it out of balance so that's what i did but i did it mindfully saying, okay, I know I'm going to throw it out of balance because, because I'm trying to make the actual dollar amount correct. As of that time frame. I know the inventory item that was impacted. I could adjust it. It was an ELP. I think I could adjust it if I need to report the sub ledger, but I don't want to mess up QuickBooks sub ledger or anything like that. Right? So I can't really report the item with the inventory. But then when I did the reversing entry, I'm back in balance. The 4346 ties out to what's on the sub ledger as of 033123. This is back to 4346. 
So we're good. We're good to go after after the reversing entry. Notice the sub ledger for for the customers. If I run this, this one forces me to use the customer. So I couldn't post something to AR without posting to some customer. I didn't want to post to Anderson. Otherwise, I would have some weird thing invoice journal entries in here. So I put all the weird stuff journal entries down into its own customer down here. Notice that these two net out to zero, but I don't have this nice connection thing. I can't really tie them out. It's still showing on my detail report, which is kind of ugly, right? So it's still kind of a messy thing down here because everything else, if I, if I netted out the invoice to a receive payment, QuickBooks would tie those two things out and wouldn't show them in this report as an open invoice. These two are back down to zero, but it's not netting these two things out. That's the problem. Now, if you don't want this ugliness down here, then you could create another accounts receivable account, but you would have to make it like an other current asset account. So there was no sub ledger related to it, just so you can put your adjusting entry into it. If you want to do that, that's okay. But this is kind of the workaround so that at least you don't have that ugly stuff in the actual customer. In other words, if I go to the first tab and I go down to the the sales area, which is the customer center and go into the customers, which by the way, if you were in the book, the business view, that's under the get paid area, get paid and pay area, such a classy name. And it's in, it's in the customers. All right, closing that back out. So then you got ZZZ down below. So this junk in here, these journal entries are not showing up in an actual customer and hopefully are down below and out of the way. That's the idea. All right, so it's going back up. I think I think that is uh, that is everything. So let's take a look at our reports, tab into the right to do so, right click and uh, let's duplicate it and let's check it out. Let's go down to our reports on the left open up some reports close the bookie i'm going to type in the journal report journal and let's do it as of the cutoff date 022823 022823 run it and then i'm going to filter by journal entry customize filter filter and that's not filter what filter and then we're going to go by journal entry run it okay so there's our adjusting entry here's the big one we looked at that's what we did last time we then reversed it as of the first day of the following period so i'm just going to go up one day to march to march first boom there's the reversing entry